on the vault. High atop the pastoral center of the Diocese of Camden, you're listening to Talking Catholic. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Talking Catholic. I'm Jen Morrow, and with me today is Mike Walsh. Jen, this has been an exciting day for us. <laughs> Why has it been an exciting day for us? Well, if anyone listened to last week's podcast, uh, you're getting to hear now the, uh, the the second podcast we've done that day. So we're pre-recording this, this, this one. So we started our morning. I started my morning in Glassboro, New Jersey, and then I drove to Camden, New Jersey, and then I drove all the way across the street, the, the state to Atlantic City, which is beautiful. Uh, we had a lovely conversation with the CFR sisters, which everybody could listen to uh, in, the, in the previous episode. You went and got some uh, Italian delicacies at a bakery. I did. And then, I promptly went to Formica's across the street from St. Michael's to get them. I thought I was doing a good thing and bringing them back for the staff. Um and even though they did partake in the cookies, I was immediately lambasted for not going to White House subs instead and bringing everybody back sub sandwiches. To be fair, they're right. They are. They're yeah, right. I have to say, when, when you went to bake, now, obviously, I'm a baker, guy, so I was pro bakery. Right. I was surprised that uh, you didn't make the run to uh, the White House. Well, what I should have done, because I considered it, and then I was like, mm, that looks like there's a line. I should have taken orders and had somebody just call it in. So all I had to do is pick it up after the podcast. Uh, that's true. But well, you know, live and learn. Yeah. And more importantly, yeah. what what do we say to, to our staff all the time? Get out of the office. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to see your face around here. Go do stuff. Do we, oh, it's true. I, that, do we I, I, that's, say that or just one of the people on this podcast? Oh, no, I say that. To, actually, I say that to all of our staff members. Uh, no. When I hired our advertising director, uh, the, the, I said, I really never want to see you here. I want you out on the street making money. Yes. So, uh, and the the managing editor, it's a little harder to get out. But, you know, everybody else, we want a part of it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah. I, okay. I want this building empty most of the time. But, no. We finished that. Uh, we finished that podcast, and we hightailed it back to the other side. So this has been a river to the ocean, back to the river kind of day. So we can't claim any of this podcast will sound good. Oh. No, <laughs> no, no, actually we can. But we no, have two we powerhouses, two back-to-back powerhouse episodes of talking. Actually, it's true. Yeah, yeah. Listen, we we understand as podcast hosts, they're not all great. But uh, but it, last week, you know, it was great. Uh, we know it was great. And this one, we're pretty certain it's going to be great because uh, we have a couple of uh, familiar voices coming on and a, a brand new friend that we're about to make. Uh, so we're very excited about that. But I, I have before we bring them on, Jen, I have a question for you, mm-hmm. uh, which is, you know, we're recording this a little early in Lent. But is your Lent going well so far? Have you have you found like have you hit your stride yet? Do you know? what your focus of this Lent is going to be? No. Okay, good. I feel better now. <laughs> and you? Um, no, no. Uh, and that's that's a typical Lent for me. I'm actually, uh, by the time Lent ends, I feel like I finally have it together. When Lent begins, it's just sort of a mad scramble to figure I Like, I'll be honest with you. I was having a conversation with the Vicar General uh, last Friday, and I was commenting that... Um, you know, I hadn't really, we were actually talking TV and he was talking about the chosen uh, TV show and how great it's been. And um, he may have clutched his pearls when I told him that I hadn't watched it yet. Uh, don't worry. He wasn't actually wearing pearls, but he, uh, he goes, well, Mike, maybe that's your, that's your Lenten, you know, task is to, you know, in addition to my sacrifice and, and prayer life and stuff like that. Maybe you need to watch The Chosen as an opportunity to, uh, you know, inspire you. So I said, you know what? That's exactly what I'm going to do. Mm. I haven't seen an episode yet, but I am planning on it. Well, it's, I've only been a couple of days. I will say that I'm, I guess I'm going to have to agree with what you said. I'm always a slow out of the gate for Lent. Like, I feel like all this pressure to like, what am I going to figure out? Or what am I going to give up? Or in some ways, what am I going to pick up? Like, you know, where there's like a, a better trait, you know? Sure. Um, and I, I feel like I get all this stress over it. And then it takes me a couple of days after Lent begins to to kind of figure it out. So that's pretty normal for me. So yeah, hopefully by the time this airs, um, don't be worried, listeners. I would have I would have figured it out by then. But I had I do have to say, because you mentioned TV, um, 
I also have not seen The Chosen, but everybody in my family seems to enjoy it. Um, but I will tell you what really moved me um, around on Ash Wednesday was, or the day days around it, I was watching uh, late night television and Jonathan Rumi and uh, Mark Wahlberg were making the circuits uh, to promote their Hallow app and they were both wearing ashes. And I have to say, I think that's the first time I've ever seen um, an actor, especially one of that notoriety, wear ashes on public television like that. Like he was on a few of those, like I said, late night TV shows, uh, comedy shows, and he would wear in the ashes. And Jonathan Rumi was out in the audience to support him. And he went out there and he was wearing the ashes. And I was really moved by that. Because uh, I was, Michael. I mean, no, no, no. It's because, you know, I've always had this uh, internal debate over the wearing of ashes. As a public relations guy, I love seeing all the ashes out there on, on Ash Wednesday because it, it reminds everybody. I think it's great evangelization. Then there's personal Mike, who, I don't know, I, I sometimes feel uncomfortable with it because, I, you know, I, I remember... You know, there's certain things about not making a show of your faith. And I, there's a part of that that I actually believe. So it's I've always had this weird balance between the two. But public relations guy. Yeah, I hope I hope they got lots of Hallow uh, app signups uh, based off of that. that well, very I, happy. Took it a, I took it less as about the, the Hallow app and more as about, hey, this this man is Catholic. And for people who, you know, follow Mark Wahlberg or Jonathan Rumi, hey, something to, to think about. I took it more as like a, a PR for the Catholic Church, not for Hallow. And that's why. True. So, Latin ashes aren't just uh, the Catholic Church. A number of Christian denominations do them. But I hear what you're saying. So, it's good for Jesus. Um, did you, when you, when you were watching that, when you, when you watched that episode, did you think back to the time you interviewed him alone in a room for 20 minutes, just you <laughs> and Mark Wahlberg? It was. Because like I got to tell you, it was 12 minutes. And yes, of course I did. <laughs> <laughs> I, t I tell that story to, I wasn't even there and I tell that story to people just so they'll be <laughs> impressed by it and and then he his his interview appeared on the podcast so that was great so yes. I will say I was what was I I was interviewing him for Father Stu and that's just yeah. up on one of the streaming uh apps for for free and uh I was yeah I think it's on again. I think it's on Hulu now could be I, 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 I got a reminder on my uh my phone about that but that's a good movie to watch, and it's a good movie to watch for Lent. As a matter of fact, I think it came out during Lent two years ago. So I think it did. Father Stu, shout out. Yeah. I, and while we're on the tab, subject of things people should watch, I uh, didn't mean for this to turn into a television episode, but uh, uh, several years ago, DeSales Media had a um, – we're doing a, a project, and not every diocese part, uh, partook of it, but ours did, and about – 60 others uh, it was an, it was a series called the chair and it was all about um uh, a diocese cathedral and a diocese bishop and a diocese people and how they were all sort of interrelated uh and just recently um that entire series has moved to youtube so if you would like to look it up uh, just go to youtube slash the chair i think uh, and you can find the diocese of camden's one we have it linked in a couple of different spots on our websites I highly recommend it. it. It too is a great, um, it is a great opportunity, you know, during this Lenten time to sort of like think about your faith and, and in this regard, the, the very Catholic nature of our dioceses, but it's also a fantastic um, interview with Bishop Sullivan, our Bishop about, you know, how his priesthood and how he decided to become a priest. And it's so good. It's the reason he's never been on the podcast. Because as they were, as they were, seriously, as, as he was being interviewed for it, and then what the fi when the final thing came out, I was like, I can't improve upon this. So, uh, <laughs> so therefore, he has never been invited on the podcast, which I do uh, get some guff for, but, um, but, and he will be, he will appear at some point. But, uh, but yeah, if you ever want to check him out and see a great conversation with him, and then all the other Dialston episodes are really good as well, but that one is particularly good. So, anyway, so I believe we have, Chit chatted long enough, and we really should bring on our our very excellent guests. So One Jen, who? Nodding, so we. <laughs> I know somebody really wants to get on, and he has no idea that that's the one I'm going to go after the most. <laughs> um, so Jen, 
Uh, can you uh, tell us who we have today? Sure, I'll start. I'll start with the nodder. We have uh, <laughs> Dr. Michael Sims. He's the director of Life and Justice Ministries for the Diocese of Camden. Hi, Mike. Hey, good afternoon, Jan and Mike, and our guests, Mark Bertram and Andrea Sarango. Pleasure to be here, and I'm glad that I was on mute because I don't know how what it controlled some of my laughter there earlier on. <laughs> Not only that, but you took over Jen's job and you did the introductions for us. You did. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can go into detail. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, yes, as uh, our third co-host, Dr. Michael Sims, as Matt mentioned, we have Andres Arango, who is the Bishop's Delegate for Hispanic Ministry here in the Diocese of Camden, as well as Director of Evangelization. Hello, Andres. Hey, hi, Jen. Nice to see you and chat with you. Hi, Mike. Mike's, you know, Sims and West. We have several <laughs> Mike's now I going with the last name here in our floor. But no, it, it's a blessing uh, to be, you know, ch chatting with you here in this podcast. And we also have um, a very yeah. special guest, Mark Bertram, who is the founder of Net Ministries. Mark, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, it's, it's a delight. Thanks for having me. So we're very a delight. You you hear that delight? Yeah. I, that's the kind of stuff I like to hear. <laughs> well, it's just like favorite word. <laughs> so yeah, one of the reasons that uh, we uh, have everybody together on the podcast is we have a very exciting event coming up in in mid March called um, Step Up Dad, uh, and it's been organized. If I understand, uh, Mr. Sims, by your office, is that correct? Yeah, it, sure, and and so it's. Office of Hispanic Ministry and Evangelization with Andreas. It's interesting enough that it's about a year ago, almost a couple of weeks, that the former director of youth and family ministries, Jose Rodriguez, and I were sitting down and he had got a in the mail a copy of Mark's book, Step Up Dad, Your Kids Really Need You. And we're flipping through and he goes, huh. And he looked at me and I'm going, let me see. And we started reading it. And then I think both of us at the same time said, wouldn't it be great if... We get Mark Bertram to come to the diocese of Camden. <laughs> and it literally is going on almost two years' time where we started mulling over this idea and how 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 uh, great that would be. So there's the beginnings of something here we, that we, brings us to today. So, Mark, um, you have a vaunted history in, uh, in working within the, the corridors of the Catholic faith with Net Ministries. For, for our listeners who aren't familiar with Net Ministries, could you... Explain what that uh, organization is. Sure. So Net Ministries is a youth evangelization uh, organization. We recruit Catholic young adults who want to do a year of mission. We put them through some training for their own personal formation and evangelistic skills. And then we send them around the country in teams conducting retreats for middle school and senior high school students. And the, the whole flow of the ministry is really to um, try to share with young people before they decide to disengage with their faith that God is real and alive and wants a relationship with them and, and to really encourage them to take a step uh, towards God and, and give him a chance to, to work in their lives. And it's just been uh, super exciting over these many years just to see how many people come alive when they hear another young person share, this is what Jesus has done in my life, and I know he can do the same thing in your life. It's it's uh, a, a beautiful organization, and, and it's long-lived. It, it, when did you, be, you're one of the founders, when did it start? 1981 was the first wow. year. Wow. How many uh, how many people have uh, rolled through Net Ministries? Would you say over the over the many years? We've had uh, just shy of thirty five hundred young adults who have served with us over the the last well now forty two years. That's um, beautiful. So yeah, I, I tell people I get to see some of the best of the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. uh, young people on fire for their faith, in love with in love with Christ who want to share that faith with other people. I mean, it's, it's just been a, a real privilege for me to, to be around so many good people. Now the reputation for net ministries is, uh, goes, goes far and wide. Uh, I've had the pleasure of being at a number of events where 
Net Ministries has been represented, and the the fondness for which that organization is held uh, is is quite high esteem. And your success rate seems to be quite impressive too. I've met some of the folks that have gone through Net Ministries, and they have truly taken their, that time where they they've learned how to become a, a missionary and really have done something with it in their adult life. So it's uh, it's absolutely beautiful. So congratulations. Mm-hmm. Thank you. And that's and that's our hope. Our hope is that we're really training people not to just serve on net, but to really be a missionary disciple for the for the rest of their life. Yeah. Well, that's certainly something I, I know that had never been on my screen until, you know, we had the year of mercy several years ago and we really made missionary discipleship uh, sort of a hallmark of quite frankly of Bishop Sullivan's tenure here and in, in this latter half of his uh of his time as our bishop, and it's something that he brings up all the time as something that we really need to strive for. Matter of fact, we mentioned earlier that um, we did a podcast with the CFR sisters down in Atlantic City, and the crux of that conversation was all about accompanying people and how important it was for them. So, you know, whether you're a, you're a lay person or a woman religious or a priest or a bishop, you know, it's something that that we really need to keep at the forefront of our minds. So thank you for, thank you for all your great work. Now, somewhere in all that time, you also got around to writing at least one book, <laughs> which was a, which was actually a great book. I, uh, Dr. Sims was kind enough to uh, quite literally throw it in my face to make sure that uh, <laughs> I, I read it. And I wasn't sure if he was throwing it in my face uh, professionally or personally to tell you the truth, <laughs> like right. to, to step up. But what, um, what sort of inspired you to write the book? You know, I think, um, you know, over the years, I've had a chance to work with thousands of young adults as net missionaries. And I've spoken with tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of young people in different retreat settings. And I've just been more and more convinced um, that the key for a young person really coming to understand themselves and their faith is having a dad who's active and engaged in their life. Um, I think by and large, moms have done a pretty good job. Uh, I think us dads have been uh, lagging behind. Um, and so, I, you know, I we get young missionaries with net, maybe some of the best young people from around the country. But when I sat down and talked with them and just heard about their life and their family life, over and over again, I was seeing uh, some pain, some wounds that they were carrying um, because dad just wasn't engaged. Um, and not necessarily dad was a bad guy. Dad just wasn't engaged in a relationship with their sons and daughters. Um, hadn't established them as a young man or a young woman. Um, and during COVID, uh, I had nothing else to do. So I thought, let's write a book and see if... Uh, if it can help people. And uh, the book's name is uh, Step Up, Dad, Your Children Need You. E- excellent. And if not uh, accurate title, I appreciate that. It's funny, you know, um, reading the book, I was kind of reminded, I in this area, we have a couple of different um, men's ministry events. One is a series of of conferences called um it started as man up philly there's now a man up south jersey one and we've had a lot of um uh, male presenters fathers who you know and oftentimes it's a cautionary tale they will tell the story of how they were not available to their children growing up and the trauma that it caused by not being there to support their children because they were focused on work or focused on their personal lives, they, but they, they were not focused on their jobs as a, as a father. So I think a, a book like this really um, is important for dads. Cause I have to, I have to admit when the, during these conferences, that does seem to be the thing that the men seem to, when it's called out to them, they seem to respond to that. Have you found that successful in your, in your presentations around the country? Yeah, I think so. I think deep within most men, is they want to be a great dad, um, but they don't think about it. Um, and life gets busy, um, pressures at work, or just the craziness of our culture. And before long, one, two, three, five years have gone by, 
and they really haven't done anything to, mm-hmm. to really be the kind of great dad that they want to be. And so, you know, my hope in these in these step up events is is really to help a guy get in touch with that desire deep within to be a great dad, mm-hmm. kind of wake it up, bring it to the forefront, and then and then hopefully give a man a, a couple of of steps, easy things any of us can do um, that can really make a huge difference in the life of our kids. Mark, uh, what would some of those steps be? Uh, you know, I think, uh, well, a number, but uh, one of the critical ones uh, is to uh, spend time, not money. Uh, sometimes we focus as dads, we want to create these memorable events Um for our kids that will just kind of blow them away. And, and if you can do that, that's, that's great. Uh, but what young people really need is, is a piece of your time. Um, some regular contact with dad. Uh, so just talking about how do we find time uh, when we're busy to focus on our kids. I think a second step is uh, what I call just say it. Uh, the importance of actually verbally affirming our, our kids you know, sometimes we can fall into the, well, they know that I love them. You know, I go to work every day and I provide a, a home and food and presents at Christmas. And of course, they know I love me. I, I love them. But I think there's something in a, in a, in a young person that wants to hear it. Um, and not just once or twice, but regularly, you know, communicating, you know, I love you. I'm glad you're in our family. I'm proud of you. Um, and then just how we relate to our, to our wives, you know, I mean, they're our, they're our greatest partner uh, in this adventure of raising, of raising kids. And, uh, you know, our culture is so mixed up right now on how men and women should relate and get along. And we get to model that right within the family. um, If we just think about it and do it right. Um, So I like to talk about things that our kids should catch us doing um, as as husbands, as we relate to our wives. So those are just a, a few of the practical steps that a, any man can do those. It's, there's no special skill. It's no secret. Uh, no one's going to go, oh my gosh, I've never heard that before. Um, it's really just reminding us of what we already know, but don't act on. You know, um, for for those of our uh, listeners who are who are being touched by this, we should let you know. Uh, if you didn't already see it in the show notes, uh, if you like what you're hearing so far, Mark will actually be presenting in South Jersey on Saturday, March 16th from 8.30 a.m. to 2.15 p.m. at Divine Mercy Parish in Vineland, New Jersey. It's a, it's a great event. He won't be there by himself. It's actually a co-headliner. We also have Manuel uh, Huerta, who will also be there. Andres had the pleasure of interviewing him on uh, the local YouTube show down in Vineland. Andres, you know, can you tell us a little bit about Manuel and, you know, what our, uh, what the, the gentlemen who attend this conference will be able to hear? Yeah, well, of course. Uh, of course, Mark knows more about money. You know, Manuel, he told us he likes to be called money, and we did it that way also in the in the TV show. You know, it's very interesting, uh, uh, again, as my sins mentioned, when Jose was thinking about this event a few months ago, he called to my office, hey, Andres, do you think this will be good also for the Latino uh, uh, parents? And I say, oh, of course, you know, especially because I think the target group uh, is more oriented with parents, with uh, small children, teenagers, youth. And, you know, the Latino population here in the diocese is, is very young. You know, you see uh, most of our Latino populations, they are families with dads, well, in their 20s, 30s, early 40s. Uh, and I think we have a, a very particular target group that, that we want to, to reach out. As, uh, the event is going to be like like bilingual. We will be begin together, you know, in the opening prayer, and we are going to end with a bilingual mass. And between those two moments of prayers, you know, we are going to have a, a track in English that Mar is going to be leading that, and Manny, he will be leading the track in Spanish. I think it's very interesting to, to have Manny because I think he, he's bilingual, he's bicultural, he's from Mexico, but I think he understands 
both words that is very important, especially for the Latino parents uh, with small uh, children. Uh, and, you know, I, I personally look forward to that event. I have been reading, you know, I have it here in my desk, a Mark book. I have been reading and trying to do the activities with my two daughters. I, a, a parent of twin daughters that they are 12 and has been very, very helpful, very helpful because... Uh, I always remember that Bishop Sullivan last year, probably, of course, you remember in, in, in the Christian Mass, you know, it, it was very good, you know, and very challenging to all the priests, and not just the priests, I think it was for everyone. And he was saying that the religious education has been a disaster here in the U.S., and we need to do something to change that. Uh, and we think that, that, that we need to reach out the, the families. Because we can continue doing a lot of religious education in our schools, in our religious education program, in our parishes. That is, the parents, and especially the dads, are not involved. And not just in the catechetical formation, but in the evangelization, being a, a Christian example uh, from their children. Again, we are going to miss another generation, and as Bishop mentioned. So I, I really look forward to, to, to this event personally. Uh, and I'm sure this is going to be a blessing for so many of the Latino men here in the dives. Mark, have you done this presentation with Manny before, or is this a, this a new creation for the two of you? Uh, this will be the first time. Uh, Manny works with me at Net Ministries, so we've worked together uh, with training our Net Missionaries and a few other things. But this will be the first time he's joining me on a Step Up Dad event. So oh, that's super- exciting. Yeah, he he's much younger than me, uh, much more vibrant, has way more hair. Um, <laughs> he's going to do really, really well. <laughs> I, I very much appreciate the hair angle. <laughs> yeah. That alone. Well, I have to say, you know, we, uh, the one thing we are known for in, in the Diocese of Camden is putting on great events. So I have I have no doubt that this will be a um, this will be a winner, um, you know, Dr. Sims, you've been in uh, working for us now for a little over a year, and and you, um, you know, you've gotten a good feel for South Jersey and the different parishes. I, do you imagine this is something that uh, the people are looking for? I do. Um, and interesting enough, it'll be actually a year this March twentieth um, that I'll be on board. But and in in establishing some of the contacts and relationships within the diocese, in particular ministries with families through life and justice, I think there's a hunger and desire, especially among men that I've encountered to explore their faith and have that relational uh, interaction with their children, whether men of any of age, as this is billed to be uh, that for young men and older men, maybe even spiritual fathers to come to. So I certainly have encountered that. And then I, like Andres, I'm excited to attend personally. Uh, folks, that might know, um, or at least uh, our hosts here know that uh, we're on a previous podcast with Mark and Manny, and just to hear them speak, and especially Manny, to to, to Mark's point of his vibrancy, uh, was really uh, inspiring for me. Um, uh, and I want to say it to Mark too, because I'm I reached out to some of my friends whose children are older, and and they're very much interested in coming and. I think it's getting that word out on a piece of Mike and, and Jen for the opportunity in this podcast to do that. Cause I think there's a deep hunger and desire. And I, I want to, if you mind me asking, ask Mark, um, one of the quotes that's from the book or from at least the ad uh, for the book is that um, the idea of fathers needing to know their kids well enough to recognize their God given personality and potential before they become fully developed. I think you alluded to that, but I, you said this, and, I, and I'm just curious if you could share with our listeners, like, what are, are some of the things that um, are the stumbling blocks today for 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 men, for fathers that um, get in the way of helping our children really realize their full potential? Sure. Yeah, I think a couple of things. I think um, <clears throat> sometimes for older dads, uh, mm-hmm. we'll think we made a mistake or we messed up, or we missed our opportunity, and we kind of quit. Uh, we, we just kind of say, darn it, you know, I didn't do it well. Um, and so I'm just, they, they become disengaged, uh, which is which is terrible. You 
you don't lose when you make a mistake. You lose when you don't get back up. Uh, mm-hmm. So one of the things I want to encourage men to do is, hey, we're, we're going to make mistakes periodically as parents. Uh, don't beat yourself up. Get up. Get going. Keep going. Um, I think the whole time thing is 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 crucial. Um, I won't really know my kids if I don't spend time with them. Um, and some of that time is going to be planned. Uh, some's going to be spontaneous. You know, uh, you were talking earlier in the show about the chosen, and it reminded me. There's this beautiful scene. I think it's in in uh, season two. There's this uh, exchange between Jesus and Peter's wife. So, in in all of chosen, we get to know Peter quite well, but we also get to know his wife uh, much more than what's in the scriptures. And and you can see that she's struggling a little bit with. You know, Peter's off having this adventure and he's important and here I am at home and not quite sure what to make of things. And at a certain point, Jesus is alone with Peter's wife and she's and, and, and Jesus says to her, I see you. I see you. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that's what our kids want. They, they, they want to know that they're seen by their dads. Um, and the only way we can see them is if we're spending time with them, um, Mm -hmm. whether it's planned or spontaneous. Um, and I think the last thing is just for us to remember that young people listen with their eyes. They don't listen with their ears. Uh, you know, we can think, well, we'll just, you know, we'll, we'll give them a a good talk and that will set things right. Um, they're watching, uh, they're watching us all the time and how we act, how we live our life how we relate to their mother. Uh, we're sending a loud message um, to our young people. And, and so I just want to encourage young, you know, encourage men. Um, hey, be attentive to what you're doing. Uh, you're teaching. You're teaching by how you act, by how you relate. You know, Mark, your, your, um, your examples remind me that, yeah, I didn't, I didn't grow up with my father in the same state. I grew up in Texas. My father lived here in New Jersey, but um, you know, he, he was always reaching out. But as an adult, uh, my dad, I've always commuted since I've lived in the state and my dad knows what time I commute. And so even if he had to get up early or move meetings around, he would call me from seven 30 to eight 30 or eight 30, you know, whatever. So we would use my commuting time to catch up and see what was going on. And that was my late twenties, early thirties. So it like kind of going back to what you were saying, it's never too late. You know, how dads um, should not feel um, discouraged that it's too late for them because my dad and I got to know each other mainly as my, and my adult life. And some of those conversations, you know, I'll never forget. Yeah. That, what a beautiful example of a dad carving out time and being creative. Um, that, that That's a great example. I mean, right. maybe he wanted to move meetings, you know, that that's a whole other thing. But <laughs> you No, know, I think he wanted to love on his daughter. Oh, man. Yeah, that is. Oh, Jen, you said something sweet <laughs> on the podcast. That's so nice. I yeah. Like see, terms like that, loving on your daughter, that's that's what really kind of really uh, has resonated with me. As, as a matter of fact, um, uh, Mark, if I when you're speaking about Mark, Wahlberg earlier, Jen, I pulled up a quote and this goes along something Mark shared. It's, uh, this is Mark Wahlberg. Uh, I'm much more concerned with being a good dad than a good actor. It's one of the reasons why I moved out of Hollywood. Being there for my children, educating them and hopefully helping them avoid some of the mistakes that I've made. Um, which, you know, it speaks to not only is how his faith has brought him to that realization, as he so often talked about, especially in promotion to the Hallowed. Too, so. And you know, this it sounds to me like this. This isn't just for for dads who have you know had their moments where they've they've failed. But it sounds like this is also a good reminder for the parent for the dads who are who are doing the right thing. Just a, a little reminder to them that you know what, everything you're doing it's going to reap benefits now and into the future. And you know, keep up the good work. Um, I I was very fortunate. I have, still to this day have a great dad and uh whatever positive attributes i have as a father uh are 100 percent a result of uh me 
uh, trying to follow his model to the point where uh, when my wife and I got married, I said to her, I said, listen, um, when we get around to having kids, uh, there's only one there's only one deal in this. I said, I will do whatever you want. But um, the first kid is going to be named after my dad because he was the greatest guy ever and he remains the greatest guy ever so um so listen dads if uh you know you do a good job you get rewarded by being a, a junior so uh you know and earning it like there were no juniors in my family i i, I was the first one to name their kid like that but he did a, he did a really good job and he remains a really good guy so yeah so a little pat on the back to all the good dads out there too. keep up the good work the yes. um yeah but but no, I, I I'm very hopeful though that uh, this this event will be very positive, be received very positively. Um, it certainly sounds like some of the feedback we've gotten already that the, there's a hunger for it. Uh, so we're very excited, Mark, that you're you're coming into South Jersey and spending some time with us, and, and Manny as well. Um, mm-hmm. I'm actually looking forward to seeing that. The um, you know we wanted to touch on a little bit related to sort of. Um, you know, we talked about missionary discipleship a little bit, and I, I wanted to hit that a little bit as well. You know, Net Ministries and the great work it does um, has, you know, it started in 1982. Has it changed over that time? Have you found other avenues for, you know, educating the folks that come in? And have you found a, that? that the changes in culture have required some changes in how net ministries operates or how it educates? Oh, definitely. Um, you know, when net started, uh, we were just retreat teams. All of our teams were retreat teams traveling around the country. I think in, in a normal year, we'll be in about 110 dioceses doing retreats for, you know, upwards of a hundred thousand young people. But we saw over time that, the church also needed help with how to establish a vibrant youth program or community at the local level. So maybe 15 years ago, uh, we started what we call discipleship teams. So those are teams that come into a parish or a high school and they stay there for the entire year, oftentimes for several years with the goal of helping to uh, create a culture that is welcoming to young people, uh, certainly evangelistic, but even more importantly, discipleship focused, you know, the, with the real goal of uh, helping the young people uh, learn those basic discipleship skills that they need to live their faith for the, the entirety of their life. And then maybe three years ago, we added Why Disciple. So Why Disciple is a digital platform that is available to parishes, and it's particularly helpful for parishes that don't have a full-time youth minister. Um, most parishes across the country don't have a full-time youth minister. If anything's going to happen, it's going to be because of volunteers who step forward and say, hey, I want to help. Uh, what should I do? Uh, Why Disciple uh, provides, on the one hand, training, video training uh, for the adult volunteer on how to run a small discipleship group. And then it provides, on the other hand, content that can be used when the small group meets together. Um, so we've just seen that doing the retreats is, is super important. I mean, that's the first proclamation, but having other follow-up uh, resources uh, are, are criti- critically important as well. You know, I think with, with young people in general, the, their, their basic needs are pretty similar to what they were when we first started. Uh, in terms of who am I? Why am I here? Uh, d- does God have a plan for my life? Uh, what's different now is the culture is so much louder and the gospel has so many more competitors uh, that it's easy uh, for the sound of faith, the voice of faith to be drowned out uh, by social media and the culture. Um, and then we're seeing the explosion in and, and a mental health crisis, uh, you know, more and more of our young people are are experiencing just tremendous uh, loneliness, disconnection, and and that's been a huge swing from when we started forty years ago. Yeah. Andres, is that um, is that a trend that uh, is the same or similar for the Latino uh, community as well? 
Yeah, of course, I think, uh, especially here, the big challenge that we are having in the United States, especially, you know, with the new generations, uh, and most of them, we know they speak more English than the Spanish, but right? they are more used to the to the culture, if we can call it that way, here in the United States. Uh, and, you know, it's one of the largest groups living the Catholic faith here in the U.S., the Latino second and third generation. Uh, and I think that the work that Ned is doing you know, it's amazing. You know, money was giving us and an, an some statistics in the, you know, we record this TV program in Spanish for, for Telemundo. Uh, he was telling us that, that the average age when the teenagers decide to leave their faith is around 13 years old. You know, uh, and it's very interesting what they say. Some parents say, no, but they still go to mass with me. You know, we still go to Sunday mass. But he said that, that the statistic what it says in their heart, they already took the decision. Doesn't matter if they are praying, going to mass with their parents, already they took the decision to leave the church or wars to leave Jesus, to leave God, not to believe in God. So I, I think we have that challenge also, again with the new generations of Latinos. You know, really how we can present them the gospel. Uh, and I think Ned, you know, is doing a, a, an amazing job with that. I have been familiar with Ned for several years. I have some friends that they were missionaries. Uh, and I think uh, really something very important that we cannot wait too late to present Jesus. You know, some of that. Everybody say I was born Catholic. I met Jesus when I was 18, thank God. But how many of our you know, children, teenagers, they never have a personal encounter with Jesus. And I think that is the, the blessing that Ned is doing. Yeah. Mark, is that is that something that uh, you and Manny will both be speaking about is the role of the father in terms of faith? Yes, for sure. You know, I think um, in a lot of families in America, we, we've left religious education up to the moms. Um, and dads have kind of been the silent partner. Um, but it's 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 interesting. Uh, studies are showing that the father actually has a more important role than the mother when it comes to transmitting the faith. Um, that's not to say that mom's not important, but if dad is not engaged, a young person has about a two percent chance of being active in their faith when they're older. If dad's engaged, it goes way up. Um, so we, we need we need we need moms lead, you know living the faith and teaching the faith, but we also need dads engaged with that teaching and that leadership as well. Um, as super critical. Do you know if that statistic changes depending on whether the children are girls or boys? Like is it or is it both? I think it's I think it's pretty universal. Um, what's what's interesting, um, a young a, a dad has a chance to teach his sons what it means to be a man, how a man acts, talks, relates to other people. But he also plays a critical role in teaching his daughter what to expect from a man and how she should be treated and nourished and, res and respected, cherished. Um, so I think dads have that dual role of you know, helping their sons to grow to be good men, but also helping their daughters to grow to be good women. Um, and that's that's modeled first and foremost in the family. You know, if, if mom and dad are are doing well, are in love, uh, acting it out in some good, positive ways, uh, that that is that just goes so far in, in helping a young man and a young woman understand who they are in this world and and how men and women should relate with one another. Yeah, and what a healthy relationship looks like. And the and the fact that mom and dad can have an argument and that doesn't mean it's the end of the marriage. It means they've just had an argument and, and they'll make up and it'll move on. And they need to see us make up. They need to see us. How do we reconcile when we hurt one another um, is, is a great lesson. Uh, and that's best learned in the home. I know that that's something actually that uh, my, my son just started dating and um, it's, it's there was a moment when I thought to myself, boy, I really hope I've modeled good behavior here. 
the uh, and I'd like to believe that I have, but um, but they had their first first date uh, the other day, and I have to say he was a it was a total gentleman the entire time, and I was very happy about that. He also and my my wife was very happy because his uh, first girlfriend is you know high GPA into all this positive stuff. They met through church. So, and, and Catholic school. So we're like, all right, this, this all sounds very familiar because it was not too dissimilar than how my wife and I met. Um, but, but there is a truth to that, you know, it's funny. We, we talk about some cultural and generational things that have changed over the last several decades, certainly for when I was a kid in the, in the seventies and eighties. And actually, if there's one, if there's one piece of terminology that I, I actually think really is absolutely 100% true is role modeling. Uh, you know, I don't know that that was necessarily something we heard about several decades ago, but now we've seen that it really does, that behavioral stuff really, really, really does make a psychological difference. And uh, you can you can even remove it from uh, from an element of faith into just, you know, ones and zeros. And, and it really is true. If you model the, the behavior you model to the people around you, to the people you work with. I, even in my ripe old age of 51, I am still blown away by people who are doing, acting professionally and living their lives in ways that I really need to improve. Um, Jen could give you chapter and verse on all the things I need to improve, but it's, uh, but it's true. And, you know, I, I think it's good that uh, even some of us old gray haired folks, or in my case, gray bearded, um, you know, she keep an open ears and open eyes to your point, you know, we need to pay attention to what's going on because it really, it, you know, there's no, you, you never stop learning. Correct. Dr. Sims. And it, that is true. <laughs> I, I, I find my dovetail on that part of, um, Mark's work and part of the step up day for dads will be inviting some allies and the importance of having allies as men. So some of the men's group, like you mentioned, uh, uh, Mike, this uh, man up from South Jersey, but the Timothy group. Uh, so reached, I've reached out to them as well as some other parish groups like that man is you. So they might have some tables out and some literature along along the way um, to, to know that there's some faith sharing. And it's important in all this. You don't do it alone. And that there are allies in, in all this. So learning through others uh, is key and important. Yeah. You know, the uh, just out of curiosity, the this is honestly, this is more for me even than the listeners, though I'm sure listeners will appreciate it too. What is the layout for the day for uh, Step Up Dad, the day for men? Well, how does that, what's the schedule look like for that? Well, I'll, I'll speak to it and then maybe Mark, because it's really, it's based upon, uh, his offering of what he's done. I mean, there's three keynotes in that, where it's a, there's a gathering where there's an introduction to both Spanish-speaking and non-Spanish-speaking men all in one place. So where it is in Divine Mercy, St. Francis, uh, St. Francis, uh, CC, the church, there's a, there's a church part to it, and then there's a hall. Whatever might have the largest group of men, whether it be Spanish speaking or non Spanish speaking, will we'll go to the largest area, hence the church. So that's part of the layout is to eventually have these conversations with Manny and Mark. But then it then it, and then it moves to some some breakfast, some hospitality, then moves to the speaking and three keynotes that maybe Mark could briefly touch upon. Uh a lunch, you know, this is all free, you know. Uh um Latino uh, lunch, for... Mike. It's good because that's what... have... for both groups, Latino lunch. Uh, Andres, that was my follow up because that's what's going to get me there. He stole <laughs> my thunder. Yeah, and very good <laughs> from Vineland, New Jersey. So come and uh, yeah. So now, time to actually come together as men, no matter what our cultural ethnic ethnicity that we are, we're there as men, as men of faith, and then. Um, and then we're to end the day with a dedication to St. Joseph with Mass, and, um, and and that's how we're going. So, But there's three principal keynotes that Mark and Manny will touch upon throughout the day. And, what, and Mark, what, what are those topics going to be? So what we'll do is, is you know, I'll, I'll speak for about maybe 20 minutes and then actually have the guys take about five or 10 minutes of quiet reflection and then conversation with guys around them. Because what we want is for the men to actually wrestle with the concepts, not just 
listen and and leave saying, oh, that was a good talk or that was a bad talk. Uh, but but to really uh, think about it and, and then try to apply it to their life. Uh, so the first session, we'll just talk about desire, the desire to be a great dad, trying to wake that up. Uh, second talk, I'll talk about uh, what's a dad's greatest resources. And then the third talk will, will be uh, who are dad's most important partners. Um, so it'd be kind of a back and forth. I'll talk, they'll reflect, they'll discuss. I'll, I'll talk again, kind of back and forth like that. And Manny will, will follow a similar uh, pattern. We've talked um, about fathers. What about grandfathers? Is this for, for the grandfathers as well? Well, I hope so, because grandfathers, if they do it right, they get a two for one. Uh, they, impact <laughs> their kid, and they impact their kids' kids. Two for one. Well, I, you know what? I love the, the, the philosophy. Are you hoping that you'll see multi-generations of uh, families there, of men there? I, I, I would hope so. I, what could be more affirming for a dad than to have his dad there as well saying, son, I'm, I'm really glad you want to be a great dad. Uh, how can I help you? Uh, forgive me for all the things I did wrong. You can do better. <laughs> Mr. Walsh, are you going to bring your dad? I, believe it or not, I while we were talking, I looked up my schedule, and believe it or not, I believe I will be spending that day doing scout stuff with my son. Oh. <laughs> scout stuff. So I may, I may be modeling good behavior. I may not be able to be there. So, but uh, you never know. It might be a rainy day, and then everything will get canceled, and I'll be able to show up. Since just to just to clarify this, did I hear correctly that this is a free event? That's correct. I love free events. It's even better. So you get free events, education, and and I'm not saying this is the most important part, but you get Latino food. <laughs> like, listen, Amen. anytime I'm just uh, listeners, if there is an event <laughs> going on in the diocese of Camden, especially if it's in Vineland, but it could be in any event uh, as long as it's, it's being run by the or co-run by the Latino groups, your food, the food is going to be outstanding. So you never leave early. Never leave before it's time for food and fellowship and then uh, go up for seconds if there's enough because uh, they really know how to put on a good spread. So and Andres, as I saw Andres' eyes light up when uh, he started talking about that. He, he, and I, he and I have had many a conversation about this. Matter of fact, when Jen came on board and the first time she went to a diocesan uh, Hispanic ministry event in Ireland, I think it was, um, oh, shoot, it would have been mid-October. Um, I said, uh, I, I, I started with, okay, you gotta go for the food. <laughs> and then she had to leave early and didn't get any food. And I was very upset about it, sure. but, uh, no, no, that's, it's, I highly recommend it. This, this genuinely sounds like, like a great idea. Um, uh, Andres and, and Mike, are you hoping to see more events like this? Uh, whether it's with Mark or, or others, uh, that we can focus on men, mothers, families. Well, the short answer is yes. And I, I think what will hopefully come from that is the engagement in other men's group, those ally building to kind of move move these conversations in these other groups, but also move it to our our female sisters here in faith, um, you know, so that we might move that to kind of looking at, which has already been on the back burner for a little bit, although moving to the front burner of Conference of Women and Spirituality. So, but yes. Andres, you have yeah, to no, no, I think the same. Again, right now, we need to be very concentrated in, in the families, in the new generations, uh, and not just this, uh, just formation, but really, you know, evangelization events. Uh, and we hope to model more events like this, that the parishes also, you know, have an example that what they can do to reach out the families in their own parishes. Well, I know that, you know, coming out of the pandemic, one of the things we wanted to do was have more in-person events and bringing people together. And uh, we've, we've done a pretty good job, but this sounds like it's going to be a, an absolutely uh, bang up day that, uh, you know, we'll all come together. So I I very much, Mark, thank you very much for agreeing to, uh, to, to do the event. But more importantly for us coming on the podcast, we really appreciate that. Don't be surprised if you get a follow-up call at some point asking for your uh, expertise in, in this area because we like to bring back uh, our educated uh, guests for multiple trips. So 
Don't be surprised if you hear from Jen at some point. She may also call upon you for a few article things in the future. So we'll we'll, we'll ride the, we'll ride you into the ground. So Mark, thank you very much for <laughs> for joining us today. And uh, Dr. Sims and Andres, here. thank you. <laughs> Dr. Thank Sims so Andres, thank you very much for putting this together and bringing everybody thank together. You. I appreciate that. And Jen, thank you. I know you have other things you have to get to right now, but thank you very much for uh, sticking through the podcast. And to our listeners, thank you very much. And we'll have another great episode next week. See everybody.